Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you six DIY Dollar Tree fall decor crafts. So this is episode two in my huge I Love Fall series. I love to share with y'all how you can make your homes boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. Now it's time to go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take this Welcome Spring sign in some Waverly White chalk paint and give this sign a good coat of chalk paint. Now, if you don't have this sign, you can use any square sign from Dollar Tree will work perfectly well. Repurpose and reuse whatever you already have on hand. We're actually going to work on the other side now and we're going to take this piece of white paper. It's made to look like kind of a whitewashed wood board and I get this paper at Hobby Lobby for a quarter. I'm then going to cut it out to suit the size of the sign. Now, if you don't have this paper, you could always just use some paint, paint it, and then draw some lines on it. I'm then taking my Mod Podge from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to Mod Podge a good heavy coat to the entire front part of this sign and then lay it down on top. I'm then going to take my little Cricut scraper to get the bubbles out and that kind of helps get the bubbles out. You could always use a credit card or a popsicle stick and I usually never get the bubbles 100% out of my Mod Podge project but once it dries it kind of soothes itself out and remember um, progress not perfection and give yourself grace. So now I'm adding another layer of Mod Podge on the front part of my sign just to seal it off and that will help it last a little bit longer. I'm so excited to share this project with you. Now this is going to be actually more of just a neutral seasonal decor piece. As I begin to share these fall projects, I want to do some just a little bit neutral mixed in there. That way if you're not totally ready to go all the way in fall, you can have some options. Now these little um, picture frames at Dollar Tree are so perfect to transition to especially if you love the farmhouse decor. So I'm just going to pop the back off. I'm then going to use some E6000 glue and just a tiny touch of that. And that's going to be a permanent hold. And then I'm going to go in with my hot glue gun and add some dabs of hot glue. And that's going to be that temporary hold while the E6000 dries. So I'm just going to pop that into the base of my little sign. I want this to kind of have that little rustic farmhouse look, but we are going to add a cute little bow at the top and then I'm gonna take this blessings sign you guys can see I'm dancing around I was totally jamming out blasting my music having so much fun crafting today okay so now I'm just taking some e6000 glue and I'm using a little bit of that and then some hot glue to hot glue um, my blessings sign on you can get these little silver um, signs at the Dollar Tree they come in a three pack and they usually come with like blessings and harvest and they come out every season so a lot of times you'll be able to reuse um, some of them from each season. Now I'm going to take some of that Dollar Tree jute twine. You actually find the jute twine in the automotive section. And I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue to the back and then just wrap that around the top. Now that I have that finished, I'm gonna go in and make a really easy bow. So you just take your Dollar Tree ribbon and you'll cut it and then you hot glue each end together. This is the easiest bow, especially if you have a hard time making a bow. And it's also the perfect kind of bow for these smaller little sign projects. So I'm gonna make the first layer is gonna be the largest. And then I'm gonna take the Dollar Tree wired ribbon that's a burlap with the lace. And again, I'm just gonna um, hot glue each end and then pinch it together and then I'm ending up with the chevron the last so I'm kind of layering and going every other pattern just to give my eye some interest and then I'm just taking a pipe cleaner and I'm going to pipe cleaner the entire um, little ribbon bow together and you can fluffy out your bows and then to cover up that pipe cleaner I'm just going to use the rest of that jute twine and you could also add just a little jewel in the center whatever doodly dad you had on hand. 
Now I'm going to make some tails and I'm just going to take my ribbon and I'm going to twist it twice and then you want to make it a boutique finish so you're going to cut a little triangle upwards on each side and there you have it. Now I'm going to hot glue it together so I'm going to hot glue my little tails first and then I'm going to add a big giant dollop of hot glue to get my ribbon on and you are going to want to press that ribbon down for just a bit and then here is how it turns out. Just pop a beautiful little family photo in and you are good to go. I think this is so fun and sweet and because we actually made it more of a neutral decor, um, this could transition more into Christmas and even spring and summer. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to go full on fall with this one. I'm going to take one of those little Dollar Tree fall pumpkins and this gold Dollar Tree marker. You get this in the crafters square section and I'm just going to draw lines down where the pumpkin um, it just already naturally has lines. So you're just going to do that around the entire pumpkin. I decided to make checks on this pumpkin. You could always just make stripes if you wanted to. So I'm going to take my gold pen and I'm just going to draw a line all the way around the pumpkin. And I did draw two more lines around the pumpkin. I had made when you saw me looking. I made another one. I was just checking to see how many lines I had drawn around it. And really it's up to you how many lines you want to draw around it. Now this is a little bit tedious because the pumpkin is has the ridges um, so give yourself a little bit of grace but it's kind of fun to, to do something hand painted now I'm using one of the little Dollar Tree paint brushes and I'm using one of the smaller ones and then I'm using the white Waverly chalk paint to go in and begin to paint my squares and I liked using the chalk paint over the Dollar Tree acrylic paint because I find that their acrylic paint is a little bit um, too thin when you're painting on top of something dark it's not bad for some projects but I would have to do a lot of layers on this one and I really didn't want to paint that many layers when there's a lot of like little detail work to do this was already a little bit of a project so just a little note there to use a little bit nicer of a paint if you have that or if you just have the extra time that's totally fine too so you're just going every other one to make the checks now if you're going to do buffalo check you could always add in another color i'm going just for the brown and white check on this one i'm kind of doing like a little bit of a spin on mckenzie child except for we're not doing the black and white for this we're doing the brown and white so I thought that would be fun I know not everybody does um, black and white and I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of a different idea so you can think about a different color with the checks but I think this is so fun and fabulous and just a different way to decorate for fall it's always nice to throw that little handmade piece in and um, it just gives it some flair and some fun and some whimsy so just continue to paint your checks give yourself grace and and have fun with it. The other thing I wanted to let you all know that I did do that I didn't show in this DIY was I went back over the checks with my gold paint pen and you'll see that right here. You can see I kind of outlined it with the gold paint pen. That's kind of an optional step if you guys wanted to do that. Now I used a gold paint pen that I found at Michael's. You can always use the Dollar Tree gold paint pen as well or you can just skip that step. It's totally up to you but check it out you guys. I think this looks so high end for only a couple of dollars you know for the paint and the little pumpkin you have something very high end it's just eye catching and fun and it's a good way to tie in those other colors that you have might going in your fall decor 
So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna share with you all how to make a fabric pumpkin with this Dollar Tree baby blanket. So Dollar Tree is carried these striped baby blankets this season, and I'm just gonna take my pizza pan, and it has seen better days, you guys, I'm telling you. I'm gonna take a Sharpie marker, and I'm just gonna very gently trace a larger circle than my pizza pan. Now you can also make these the pizza pan size, but I did wanna make a really oversized one for this one. I make them actually in all sizes. In fact, I share these all the time. I'll share them in different colors and sizes in just different ways. I think they're such a fun DIY. Now I'm gonna take um, a needle and thread and I will tell you, do a heavy duty um, thread or a heavy duty um, type of ribbon or cording actually is probably what you want to do. I used thread because this is all I had on hand. I actually have a heavier cord, but I just can't find my larger needle. Anyway, you're just going to take this and you're just going to go in and out and you're going to make a little poof um, or a little, uh, I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> anyway, a little pouch. You're going to make a pouch. So you just go in and out with your needle and thread and you do that all the way around your entire circle. This is so easy, you guys know I don't sew and I can actually do this one. So once you have your little pouch, then you're gonna pull it back out and you can see I didn't cut my thread apart yet. Now I'm gonna just take some old pillow stuffing and put the pillow stuffing in. And this is where it gets really tricky because that thread is really thin and I actually popped my thread and had to redo the whole process. So I'm telling you guys, use a heavier cording try not to use thread unless that's all you have. And if you do, you're just gonna have to go really, really slow and just treat it very, very delicately because the thread is really not very strong and so it will break. Um, so just a little note for that. But the project was a success, I promise. <laughs> so just be patient, give yourself grace and begin to just go ahead and pull those together very carefully and very gently. <laughs> So for the next step, I'm just gonna take this little Dollar Tree sponge brush and then some of this Waverly antique wax. You could also use brown paint. I'm gonna pull the sponge part off and then I'm just going to take and stain this. Now, I usually use just a grapevine stick outside, but I know not everybody has access to be able to pop outside and grab a stick. And so I thought this would be a good option for you if you don't have access to sticks outside your house that are big enough for a pumpkin stem and then once I had this done I was able to just go ahead and tie the pumpkin off and then I always use a little bit of hot glue around my stem just to go ahead and secure a little bit more that just gets it even more secure in there and then if you use a cord you can pull it really really tight but because I <laughs> use the thread I wasn't able to pull it as tight as I normally would be able to but it's no big deal you just use the hot glue but you have to sit there and hold it until it's all the way dry okay so now I'm going to add in these pretty little leaves because you guys know I have to go totally extra and do some decor on my pumpkin because of course my pumpkin has to be a little bit more fabulous but hey you guys do however you love now I'm going to take this pretty little lace that I've had in my stash and Dollar Tree does carry a very similar kind of little detail lace but just use whatever ribbons you guys have on hand and I'm going to add some hot glue and just kind of take the ribbons and cascade them down and around the front of my little pumpkin and really you guys customize this to suit your fancy whatever kind of um, fabric and decor you have on hand use that now you guys can see this beautiful brooch that I have from totallydazzle.com I'll leave their um, website down below but they have the prettiest brooches and jewels and they're about $1.50 each they're super affordable and just so beautiful and dazzling you could also make this a memory pumpkin by using a loved one's um, piece of jewelry or even a broken piece of jewelry that you guys might have in your jewelry box that you didn't want to get rid of this would be the perfect thing to use for it if you wanted to make it a little bit more glam like I did but again just the simple pumpkin I make those as well all kinds are kind of fun actually just to mix together mm -hmm. 
For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take these four large long wooden signs and I want to make a pumpkin fresh sign. So I'm just going to take some of my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm just going to chalk paint each one of these signs. So I believe I ended up using three coats. The lighter signs I probably only needed two coats for, but the darker signs needed three coats and I wanted the finish to match. Um, and I am doing the front and then all of the sides with my chalk paint. And then you want to give it about, I gave it about 30 to 40, 45 minutes dry time in between. And um, then you should be good to go for your next step. Now for the next step, I picked up this arrow from the Crafters Square and you can probably see me gyrating around. Again, I am jamming out to my music while I'm crafting today. I promise I don't have to go to the restroom. <laughs> so I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I get all of my Waverly products at Walmart and I will give a big shout out to one of my viewers wonderful amazing friend i had the biggest surprise in the mail she sent me a giant um bottle of the waverly white chalk paint because she heard that i was out so thank you janice you know who you are and i am so appreciative I'm going to be chalk painting a lot of things because I've been out for a while. And so anyway, take your little sponge brush and you're going to use paint or wax to paint your entire arrow with. This arrow is from Dollar Tree and it's in the crafters square section. I then made an overlay of chalk paint because I wanted it to have kind of that brushed kind of antique look. And so I layered the chalk paint on while the wax was still wet and the chalk paint was still wet. Then I just took a towel and I brushed it all off and so that kind of combined it and made it look kind of vintagey. It's a little bit hard to see here but it, it absorbs into the wood and it gives it kind of that vintage effect and then you can take some sandpaper and rub sandpaper over it and that's going to make it even look more aged. The more layers of paint that you add and sand off, the more aged your um, project's going to look. Now we're going to put those signs together. So I'm going to use E6000 glue. And again, the E6000 glue is a permanent hold. The hot glue is a temporary hold. The E6000 glue does have an odor. So if that bothers you, you may want to work outside on this step of the project. Um, but I do want this to hold together really well. And because these are wood pieces, I could have also used wood glue. I didn't have wood glue so this will work as well I've used this plenty of times and it works just fine so I'm just continuing to glue these signs or the little pieces together and I'm just stacking them on top of each other Now, once I have that step finished, I'm going back in with my Waverly Antique Wax. And I want to just stress this piece very, very gently. The chalk paint is going to really want to absorb the wax. So I'm just using a tiny, tiny bit on the end, end of my sponge brush. And then I'm going back over it just barely. I didn't even add any more wax to it. That's how lightly I wanted it to be. I really wanted it to be very light, but I didn't want it to be stark white. <laughs> And now I'm going back over it with um, a very fine sandpaper just to kind of blend that in and kind of make it again look kind of vintage and aged. Now I'm going to take my little arrow and just center it on to my piece here. Now I did use my Cricut Maker and I made this little farm fresh pumpkin or pumpkin patch sign. Um, and so I use the Cricut, uh, it's a pink Cricut Air, I believe, um, but I am just using transfer tape. So I printed it out. I used a heavy duty transfer tape and then I'm just using my scraper and applying it and pumpkin on one side and then patch on the other. And then I did want to leave room on one side to add some jute twine to kind of make it look a little bit more vintage and rustic. This was probably the hardest one that I've done so far. I'm a Cricut beginner, and so bear with me. Now, Dollar Tree does carry a lot of pretty lettering and stencils in their crafters square section. So if you don't have access to a Cricut, that's
that. It's no big deal at all. You can still do this project by just using some of the Dollar Tree lettering and then a pretty pumpkin stencil, or you can hand paint your own. Get creative and just have fun with it. Now I'm going to take some of the jute twine and wrap it around the end, and you just hot glue it in the back to secure it. And I am so excited for this. So I will admit that my husband did have to help me resize the pumpkin patch sign. So it wasn't perfect, but for a more advanced Cricut project for me, I'm pretty excited about it and pretty pleased. <laughs> Again, the Cricut is a new thing for me. So anyway, there you have that. But I hope you guys are loving it and you're inspired to do something fun, get out of your comfort zone and have fun with it. I am loving the copper colors too. If you guys can tell this setup and setting is definitely very copper driven. Okay, so for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree adhesive bling wrap and I'm gonna cut it to fit the size of my flickering flameless candle. Now, Dollar Tree does carry a flameless candle that's battery operated. I have not seen them in my stores forever, so I just started ordering them on Amazon. They have a three-piece set that's really, actually really nice. I believe it's $18 for the three-piece set, so of course it is quite a bit more than Dollar Tree, but it's a little bit, it's quite a bit higher quality. Um, it does take batteries, and so I'm just going to take the adhesive bling wrap. I cut it to suit the size of my candle, and I did have to cut it in two pieces because it was in a sheet, but it just goes right on your candle. So you don't have to glue it or anything. It just adheses right to your candle. And this is how it will look if you just use the bling wrap. Now, of course, you guys know I went a little bit extra and I decided I wanted the bling wrap to be offset with a rustic element to kind of give it just some dimension with um, the elements of this DIY. And so I'm taking the jute twine, I'm gonna wrap that around and then trim it off and then just hot glue it. And because the adhesive wrap has a little bit of sticky, it'll kind of stick a little bit to that as well. So I use the jute twine at the top and the bottom of this project. And then if you want to, you all could always add a bow to the front of this. You could call it good, um, but I did go a little bit extra and I used one of my totally dazzled jewels because they're so pretty and they actually have this rose gold that to me looks very copper. And because I'm doing this copper theme, I just thought it would be so fabulous. So I just added one of those as well. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this super adorable little owl. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. And if you love him as is, I think he is so cute as is. But I did want to just kind of soften him up and have him be a little bit more of like a shabby chic farmhouse owl. So I'm using some of that Waverly White chalk paint and I'm just going to go ahead and chalk paint him. Um, I did end up doing, I believe, three coats of chalk paint just to completely cover him all the way and I like to let it dry about an hour in between and then once I have the three coats on I did use the Waverly Antique Wax again and then I'm just using my little Dollar Tree sponge brush I like to dab it off because the chalk paint absorbs the wax really quickly and this is an antique color so it's pretty dark um, and so I just gently added a little bit of wax here and around I wanted to give them a little bit of a vintage feel and then once you have a little bit of wax you can just take I just used a paper towel. I think you're really though supposed to use like a soft cloth, um, but a paper towel is easy for me and I can just toss it when I'm in my studio. So sometimes that's a little bit easier for me. I'm using a gold paint pen and giving him a little bit of accent. And then there he is and he's just so cute and it just gives him a little bit of a different look, you know, kind of that more farmhouse shabby chic style. You guys know that I love, um, but again, he was really cute in the original form as well. So as always, I ask for you guys to comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video? I love to hear what you guys love because it just lets me know um, kind of what to more what to make more of. And also don't forget to comment and subscribe so you can be entered into my Hobby Lobby giveaway. That giveaway is gonna be announced next week. So I'm super excited to spoil you guys with the Hobby Lobby gift certificate. So thank y'all for being here and I just love you guys so, so much. 
So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is such a true blessing and an honor to have you all here. Click on the rest of the I Love series fall series playlist if you guys want to catch up on all the fall crafting and decorating and if you are totally jamming out on summer i totally get you i have done hundreds of summer decor diys and i'll link that summer playlist down below for you as well so thank you guys again for being here it is a blessing and an honor to have you guys here to have you joining me and all of my little crazy crafty mama um inspiration i want you guys to comment down below and tell me what you're inspired to make for the upcoming seasons. I also have some amazing Christmas in July fun goodies that we're going to do. So stay tuned for that, you guys. I love you all to the moon and back. Don't forget to join me over at my Livy's Romantic Home Facebook page. I share videos over there as well as I have a free group page for you guys to socialize. Um, just request to join. I'll approve your request and you can post photos of your DIY and your home decor projects over there. You guys are so inspiring and I want to encourage you all to keep up the good work. I know everybody is at a different journey in their crafting um, path and so give yourself grace and just keep working and keep um, creating it is so good for your heart and soul I also have a Olivia's Romantic Home Instagram page pop over there follow me over there I share a good morning cup of coffee with you all every morning and I also share behind the scenes little recipes and sneak peeks um, crafty projects just what I have going on in my regular day-to-day -day life things you might not see on YouTube or Facebook so anyway I love you all to the moon and back. Thank you for being here. It is a true blessing and an honor. You guys don't even know how much I appreciate you and love you. So I'm wishing you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. I can't wait for the next video. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves, be kind to one another. Until then, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.